Mr. Marshall Public Library uh, History Project. I also have Mr. Don Gwynn up here, and he's at his mother's house at 510 South 6th Street. It is Monday, January the July the 28th, and we'll just start with Don. I've known you for a long time, but if you would just kind of outline when, where you were born, and uh, your early life maybe, and also you probably want to talk something about farming. Okay, well, um, I'm Don Gwenup. I'm 62 years old. Uh, Rose Curran and Robert Edward Gwenup are my parents, and I was born at St. Anthony Hospital in Zygo County, Indiana, August 28, 1951, and I was raised on a farm, the Gwinnett Farm, uh, northwest of town, about three miles, and uh, I was the oldest of five children, and my uh, grandparents, both Gwinnett and Curran, lived close by and were daily visitors to our house, and my dad was a farmer, and my mother was a housewife. Uh, my dad uh, worked with his, his dad, Arthur Gwinnup, and had a dairy and uh, raised quite a few hogs. And my grandmother and my mother raised chickens. And uh, they farmed four to 500 acres in the 50s and 60s. And then uh, my grandfather retired. And uh, about the time I was in high school, uh, he died. And my dad had uh, expanded the farm with the help of hired labor and increased the farm size to five to six hundred and raised primarily corn, soybeans and wheat and um, sold the dairy because he was allergic to cow hair and uh, in the 60s expanded into uh, hog production, farrow to finish and raised a lot of hogs and uh, probably by the time he retired in uh, the 1980s um, he farmed maybe 800 acres and uh, I went to uh, Marshall High School and then to Southern Illinois University at Carbondale and had a degree in agriculture. And after two years of teaching ag and industrial arts, I came back to the farm and I've lived there uh, on the farm since uh, 1993. And uh, prior to that, I farmed about 10 years and lived elsewhere. And uh, my wife, Susan, and my Children, Molly and Andy, were raised there in the same house that I was, and uh, the, the farm that I live on was uh, occupied by my father and my grandfather and my great-grandfather and my great-great-grandfather, so part of the land we farm has been in the family since 1840, and uh, quite a bit of it since the 1850s. So um, the family has pretty well stayed in the same place. I believe that Joseph went up. My original ancestor came uh, across on the uh, Erie Canal to uh, Buffalo, New York, and then walked to Sandusky, Ohio, and then took the Indiana and Michigan Canal to Terre Haute. And uh, in 1837, uh, they moved to south of Terre Haute and crossed the river into Illinois and found some land and went to the Federal Land Office at Palestine, Illinois, and bought the, the land where we live today from the federal government, and that's the land that uh, forms the center of the farm that we have today. So it's a diversified farm today with uh, crops and livestock, and uh, um, my son Andrew would be, I guess, the sixth generation of Gwinnup to live there, and uh, um, we've trans transpired from uh, horsepower to uh, gasoline and diesel tractors and today uh, of course we've got a lot of technology uh, combines and tractors have guidance systems and all kinds of recording devices and yield monitors and uh, we use GMO seeds and herbicides and insecticides and fertilizer and a lot of other crop production inputs to make the crops uh, competitive in today's marketplace. Uh, there was a time uh, around 1900 when most of the land that, that we own, which was timber soils, it was not black prairie, it was timber, and, and uh, it had been farmed for 50 or 60 years and it wouldn't hardly raise any crops then before the days of fertilizer. And, um, during my grandfather's time, he started to apply lime and apply commercial fertilizer, potash and phosphate, and uh, 
raise sweet clover and plow it down to the green manure crop and use manure from the livestock and gradually increase production again. And I do remember him saying in 1948 he built a new corn crib and raised his first 100 bushel corn crop. And now um, on occasion we raise 200 bushel corn crops. And the interviewer today, Damian Macy, we are the tenant farmer on his farm, and I believe uh, last year his corn was 200 bushel, maybe for the first time since I'd farmed it. So we've seen quite a bit of changes in everything over the length of time, and our farm is a sesquicentennial farm, as is Damian's. The, the Madden family into the Macy family has held on to the land since uh, the early 1840s and 50s, and uh, uh, if our farm was entered in 1840 and this is 13, we're approaching 175 years of being in the same place, so that's quite a record. So, uh, uh, You mentioned technology, and obviously it's changed so many things. Is there one area of that that has influenced the production and the ease of the farmer or making it more difficult for him? Well, you could think I think it? the ease of operations, just the, probably the, the one, one specific uh, invention that was has been around a long time, but they've adapted for farm use as hydraulics. Um, when my grandfather was farming with horses in 1910, it was horses and labor and and uh, all horsepower. And with, with hydraulics and engines and motors, uh, the manual labor has become much less. And uh, between electro electronics and hydraulics, most of the work is done by machines and most of the machines are operated electronic and even today most of them are now programmed and you still require a, a driver and someone to think but uh, almost all the almost all the physical work in, in most of the crop production is, is done uh, mechanically by hydraulic and, and electronic uh, means so that's probably the greatest labor saving now there's a lot of record keeping and a lot of computer type things which inter interact there but the actual hydraulics and electronics and the switches and the, the work that the machinery can do because of all this is just tremendous and that's allowed us to go from 20 bushel corn to 200 bushel corn. I'm just always amazed and I don't even understand all of the technology behind the GPS systems but I'm amazed at what is done with the GPS and tractors and combines anymore. A lot, of, a lot of tractors and combines have GPS systems, guidance systems. You set it on a straight line at the end of the field and lock it in, and it will drive itself to the end of the field. And, and there is technology for some of them to turn around, but at this point, most Clark County farmers have to flip off the guidance system and turn it and start back, and then it'll take over. But uh, there's still a lot of chores that are, can't be done with guidance. I mean, when you're uh, most of the hay chores and some of the cultivating and uh, there's still many things that you, you got to have the personal guidance and the, the brain power of the individual to determine what needs to be done. But uh, yeah, things just keep changing, and I'm sure they'll change to uh, things that we can't even imagine now. So uh, a lot of a lot of changes on the horizon. Well, they have not developed any system at all, or something that can make milk. You still need the cow. Still need the you cow. You still need the pig for the ham. So they haven't completely technologist out of the world. Yeah, for the for the kind of diet that most Americans like, we still need the traditional uh, livestock and crops and uh, probably will for quite some time. What are changes that you see kind of on the horizon that may influence agriculture extensively? Well, for the last 200 years, we've just had a, a steady consolidation of farms. Uh, the average farm probably prior to the Civil War was 40 acres, and I think the average farm in Illinois is five to 600 acres now. And most of the commercial farms are very big, and uh, you'll probably con continue to see that consolidation. There'll be hobby farms and part-time farms and other kind of farms. People will live there just for the lifestyle, but most of the commercial farms will continue to be pretty large and get bigger. It's just economics that many things, not everything, but many things are the efficiency of size is what pays the bills and uh, uh, you can buy 10,000 gallons of diesel fuel at a, at a cheaper rate than you can buy five gallons and, and the need for large amounts generally will entitle you to discounts which makes you more competitive so uh, to a point, to some point, the larger producers have some advantages but uh, I, I think
think that will continue. And I think technology and science will continue. We have genetically modified crops now so that uh, certain insects and diseases and, and uh, other uh, problems with crops can be controlled without spraying them or without hand dealing with the situation. Um, I think it's mostly, most of society believes that, well, you're probably better off to put fewer chemicals and on the ground and in the air and onto the field and, and uh, maybe the gen genetically modified ha does have a place and it is probably better for the environment. So all these things are, are not without their drawbacks, but society as a whole benefits. Food is cheap and we have plenty of it and probably we have too much of it in some cases. And uh, so less than 1% of the uh, workforce in the United States are engaged as farmers and Prior to the Civil War, it was probably 50%. So uh, it, it frees up people to do a lot of other things. All the and we look at Marshall. The whole basis of Marshall when it began was agricultural oriented. So you're con continuing to maintain one of those early uh, early industries. That's right. Uh, Marshall's still kind of a farm town, uh, more so than maybe a lot of places. Uh, we've got a lot of farm businesses, uh, grain elevators, chemical and feed and seed suppliers. Uh, machinery dealers, a lot of the uh, inputs and a lot of the, the job opportunities are related to agriculture in some way. So uh, Clark County, uh, you know, we've, we've gone from 25,000 to 15 or 16,000 people and most of that loss has been in the rural farm areas, but still as a percentage of the, uh, the jobs and the income in Clark County, agriculture is still by far the largest single employer and the largest single uh, industry when it comes to jobs and, and money money that go, flows through the county and, and provides economic benefits to the folks that are here. Well, thank you very much, Don. I think when we look at our agricultural, our basis of our community, um, you've really expanded on what most people, many people don't realize the significance of the agriculture. They drive through the corn and the beans, but that is the basis of what keeps this area going and also helps put the food on the table. That's right, correct. So we thank you very, very much, and this will go into print for people to read in the future. I appreciate your help, and thank you much for participating in the oral history of the Marshall Public Library. Thank you.